When you import the library, then what? Direct size Scala. Safety features that Scala gives you. Uh, trustworthy, fast, stable. Good setups that are ready to use. Promote Scala, to speak with other people. And let you learn Scala. So it's a virtual cycle. All refactorings for every error imaginable. It's going to be great. What is the future of Scala 3? I think the future of Scala 3 is lean and direct size Scala. Libraries like Aux, Gears, not driven by very complicated and higher kind of types, but by simple capabilities. This I think will be user friendly, newcomer friendly, and allow you to be much more productive than now. And probably easier to approach for people new to Scala as a language in general. Yeah, definitely. If you are using CATS, you will be using CATS for some time. But nowadays, people who are new to Scala rarely start their new projects in CATS. So we want to give them something that is more simple. Okay, thank you. What advice would you give to library authors who want to make their libraries more approachable to beginners? I think there are a few components to that. First of all, the API discoverability. Because when you import the library, then what? I guess you need to have some object to start, some hints from metals from whatever your IDE is. You read the manual. <laughs> yeah, so this is the other component, right? You have to give some sort of manual, some sort of uh, examples in the readme, or maybe just write good tests that someone you know, can inspect, see how you intend the API to be used. So those are like two good starting points, I guess. Are there any kind of patterns in code that you can apply to make it kind of self-descriptive or self-discoverable? Yeah, I guess, uh, depending on what you develop, right? If you provide, for example, a lot of syntax or like implicit stuff, then make sure to have like all-in-one imports like cats do with cats uh, syntax all, for example, so that people do not have to remember that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And then like a uh, object that you can start with where you have those uh, things like basic requests in STDP, for example, this is all, all very helpful to start. Okay, thank you. What's going to be the major use case for Bizum? The best use case would be to get to the market as fast as possible with Scala. And what we want to build is actually a set of um, tools that allow Scala programmers to um, deploy to clouds like AWS, GCP, or Azure, or any, any other uh, cloud providers with all the nice safety features that Scala gives you. So we want to push the um, type system to help you uh, to get your application to your users in a way that is both fast, robust, and helps you um, reach your business goals as fast as possible. Okay, thank you. Thank you. What are the Scala Center's plans for the community? Thank you for that question. Scala Center is uh, really, Scala Center's role is really to help the community do what they already are doing. Uh, we are there to support and guide, maybe also to incubate certain things. So currently, one of the favorite projects that we are going to start and announcing actually at Scala is the Scala Ambassadors Program. And that program is there to recognize all the people like yourself who are already doing things in the community to promote Scala, to speak with other people, to welcome newcomers, whether speakers or newcomers to Scala. Uh, and they're doing already this uh, work on their own and maybe sometimes feel isolated uh, to ensure that there is a little bit more people around to create this network or a sub-community, so to speak, and for the Scala Center to help promote, uh, share resources and, and such things. So it's a program that is for to start with to recognize, but hopefully it can grow into something more. And with that, we hope to leverage uh, more people around the world to actually continue promoting Scala and growing the community uh, on their local level. And then hopefully the conferences are going to see more people coming, new speakers joining and so on. Amazing, looking forward to that. Thank you. Thank you. What is your biggest source of inspiration for creating content? The inspiration that I use for creating uh, articles and videos is usually my own curiosity because as I see some Scala libraries or some tools or some new ways of thinking and approaching code, I get curious of trying things out on my own two hands. And the kind of experiments that I make on my own is the basis for what later became articles and videos in a more streamlined fashion so that other people can understand my mode of thought. 
do you spend a lot of time uh, just experimenting with stuff? Uh, do you, how do you balance that with actually producing something that uh, basically uh, earns your living? Well, it's a balance, you know, when uh, you have to create actual products that earn you a living or building actual software. The range of experimentation is generally quite limited because you have to produce stuff that gets you an outcome. So I have to essentially carve out time for myself to do experiments and learn new things so that I can then borrow the modes of thinking that I learned from there into the actual software. So it's a virtuous cycle of done right. Great, thank you. Thanks so much. What is Scala Space? So Scala Space is pretty much a social media account. So like, you know, a voice of the team the teams actually from Virtus Lab, from Software Mill, a place where, our, where we can share all the interesting stuff about open source, about Scala community, and the place where we can be really opinionated. And hopefully you are producing here like a content that you like, that you enjoy, and content that can shape and let you learn Scala. Amazing, thank you. What is the future of Scala tooling? So in my opinion, it would be great if we had almost all refactorings for every error imaginable. So automatic error fixing, maybe some AI there. So we could try to use AI for some errors that are more difficult. And another thing that would be extremely helpful would uh, be getting the compiler, at least up to the typer part, uh, into JS uh, native, which would uh, probably allow, for example, metals to uh, work on JS. So you could have built-in metals, at least parts of it, or you could make it work on native, which would be probably much faster startup, which is sometimes a problem currently, because metals takes a bit of time to start. Uh, so that would be really amazing. And in the web browser, the possibilities are endless. You could run stuff in the web browser without an issue. And maybe some work would be needed, but you know, things would be much simpler for uh, presenting things, showing things. Things like uh, Scasti could run entirely in the browser with, yes. with this? Yes, at least completions, uh, stuff like that, like hovers, which are done in Scasti, they would be natively within the browser instead of what happens now, which is it runs within a server and it responds. So it's a bit more involved and it can break. So more decoupling from the JVM, not only on the runtime side, but also on the build time side. Yeah, I mean, we cannot entirely decouple from JVM, but some parts would be super useful for the tooling. And uh, so this is kind of a future of tooling where you can um, make the tooling you want irrelevant of the platform you want to use. I see. Thanks. Thank you. What's next for Scala.js? What we're focusing on now is uh, producing smarter bundles, producing faster bundles, and producing the bundles faster. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then in the ecosystem surrounding Scala.js, uh, of course, there are starting to be several mature UI libraries. Laminar and Tyrion come to mind. So Laminar is for the uh, less FP inclined, let's say, and Tyrion is for the people who can't stand seeing a VAR. Um, there's still lots to be done in terms of best practices, but definitely more infrastructure, let's say, um, tutorials, good setups that are ready to use, so let's say. Mm -hmm. So expanding the grasp of Scala.js on the production world, kind of making it more production ready than it is now? I would say it is production ready, but it you have to be willing to get into it. I see. Uh, and lowering the barrier of adoption is, is perhaps a better description of what that is. For the future, it's not technically Scala.js, but we are looking into compiling Scala to WebAssembly. Uh, and that starts from the Scala.js side of it. So taking the Scala.js semantics, the Scala.js dialect, if you want, and compile that to WebAssembly for JS hosts. So you can also expect some stuff to get uh, to, to arrive in that, in that space as well. Very exciting. Thank you. Thank you. What is the future of Metals? A very nice future. They're very fast, very stable and just working ID. What is the near future? Near future of Metals is the same. We are trying every day to make it the best as we could. And with the cooperation of the compiler team, we have few experiments which will enhance the user experience very, very, very soon. What about uh, best effort compilation? Is yes, that going to help? Experiments, yes. So this will fix the issue uh, with projects which completely fail to compile. This is a big problem for Metals. We can't 
really help it, but best tasty effort will solve this issue partially, and we hope for the best. That's probably one of the biggest issues that people have with metals compared to IntelliJ, right? So this could possibly bridge the gap and maybe convince more people to start using it? Well, that's one argument maybe that can convince them, but there are other which are better. Metals are always correct when you have values returned from the uh, from the server uh, because they use the same compiler that build tool uses. So the result, the output is the same. So this is the biggest benefit of metals. So like a you. trustworthy compiler. Yes, trustworthy. ID. Yeah, so maybe this is even better future for metals. Trustworthy, fast, stable ID. Well, I uh, raise my glass to that future, thank you. No problem. What is the future of Scala in IntelliJ? Well, it's going to be great. We are steadily developing better features, fixing bugs, uh, making a lot of small improvements all over the place. Uh, Scala free support is pretty stable already and it's going to be only better. Is there going to be any integration, any more integration with native tools like the compiler or metals? There is going to be for sure some integration with the compiler, although um, we need to somehow balance it. Our internal model is very different from the compiler, so the compiler will be used there to uh, just improve what we already have. Okay, thank you. Thank you.